Hello. Hello. Back again. What Back again. Episode four. It's four, yeah. Thank you for joining us. My name is Perry. I'm Ed. We're guys playing games, and we have a special guest with us this week. For the first time ever. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. sure if I should say hello. I was like, you guys were doing an <laughs> intro, and uh, now I'm here. Yeah. I inter- oh. yeah, this is Sujoy. Please introduce yourself. I'm Sujoy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I don't know. I don't like doing my own intro. It seems really egotistical. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you don't do it, none of us are. So oh, yeah. yeah. Just, just, right. What should I just I, I was, uh, say... Potentially the UK's first pro gamer. That's exactly right. Yeah. Back in uh, back in '96, I started playing Quake. And, uh, oh. That's when I started playing Quake, and I was one of the best in the world. But it was 2000. I became a pro gamer, and uh, that was sort of a, a real life changing moment. And uh, obviously, went around the world, got pretty well known for for playing Quake. So you, you, Not, and, you and Fatality were the, uh, the, the, big, the two yeah. names. The rivalry back in well, the day. Well, we we both had Razor sponsorship. Uh, he was way, I'll be honest, he was way better than me. <laughs> but I could market myself better. Don't, don't tell him that. No, 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 that's true. I'm quite happy to say, look, there's better gamers than me, but I, I got the marketing right. I made a business out of it. Um, and uh, I think my first sponsorship deal was bigger than his, I think. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe not. But I mean, no, no, he, he's fatality. He's super successful what he did. But I, I, I mean, like, we kicked off esports back then. That was the start. Yeah, that was the start, it was wasn't such it? an yeah, exciting time. Literally the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Before, before Twitch before, and YouTube yeah, and yeah. Facebook before and Twitch, any of this. There was Sujoy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> people keep telling me I was only 10 of you. You, you, you were like top of those 10, were you? <laughs> you were like, <laughs> but yes. No. We, we had a really thriving competitive scene. There was a huge community. We just didn't have the tools to get the yeah. message out. Yeah. This, this was back when esports pros were called cyber athletes. Cyber athletes. Yes. Yeah. That amazing <laughs> title that was given. Well, we played players. the big league, it was the CPL, the Cyber yeah. Athlete yeah. Pro League. And yeah, it, it used to be, these days it's, you know, you say someone's MLG. Do you, do you still do that? Yeah, yeah. I think the older I think it's more seen so, yeah. as a derogatory term. It's, it's well, yeah, yeah, it's become a meme. I mean, MLG. But back game. then it was CPL, that's what yes. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like MLG 360 no scope. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's yeah. exactly. That, it's how we made fun yeah. of people yeah. back then. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, we used to be cyber athletes before uh, <laughs> before the trademark yeah. got taken away. Oh dear! <laughs> had a big, it had, like, had a big silver logo, CPL logo. Oh, yeah, so no, no, it was a good. It was. It was Damn, it's, look it's, at you. Yeah, it's probably the knowledge, the knowledge over this, here. This is when I when I yeah, met is, Ed. Actually. Yeah, this is when we met. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, we used to play together at the playing fields. Uh, so yeah. I never used to play because I was far too I remember, I remember you playing some QT. No, sorry, QT, I never used QT to pay. Oh, pay. Yeah, sorry, a slip <laughs> of the tongue. I never used to pay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's one of the perks of being a. Yeah, yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was the attraction. <laughs> but no, no, I loved that place. It was a great yeah. time to be playing games, sort of in this amazing environment, loads of computers, loads of sort of fellow game nerds. Yeah. Yeah, it was good times. Yeah, it, it was great. And did you used to pay? You used to work there? Didn't you get in? I, well, no, I, I started going, uh, yeah, I ended up working there, so yeah, I didn't pay. But, yeah, I don't feel so, too yeah. bad about it then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, until until I worked there, I'm pretty sure I paid. I must have done. That's okay. pretty pretty damn cool. Yeah, but yeah, so yeah, we've known each other. That's almost yeah. like 18 years, 19 yeah, years? Yeah, a long, a long while now. Yeah. It's, it's kind of terrifying to think about it, isn't it? When, yeah. when you think about the length of your friendships with like the oldest people you know. It's, it's yeah. weird. It's weird that you've known each other for 18 years. Yeah. It's incredibly cool though. <laughs> incredibly cool. So uh, what... Has... The, sorry, the cool thing for me about that is how the in- environment's changed, the industry's oh, changed. for sure. So yeah. we had like, yeah. you know, kind of little communities, but now it's big community. Yeah. Now you've got yeah. Twitch viewers, now it's like millions of people tuning yeah. in to watch yeah, it. Yeah, so the, I think, yeah, that's the difference between the, the communities then were very local. Mm-hmm. It was because... I mean, I remember like when they got broadband at the <laughs> venue. Like broadband wasn't a thing. Like so, all the communities you, you had these very isolated communities yeah. which were local, would play at land parties and stuff. And like, yeah, online play wasn't anywhere near. Well, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't anything like it is now. Yeah, I, so, I don't know, but we we've seen it all. That's the thing. Yeah, it's, it's like you know when you see. I, I was like. Out, I was just out Don't of that. Don't even want to know how time old you zone. were. I was when you two met and we're, and we're playing games. I was five years old. Oh what? <laughs> That's kind it's of cool though. It's depressing. cool that we've got two, almost two, two, <laughs> gener- two views on the the whole generation, which is really cool. Yeah, on, on the whole esports. Anyway, get on with your show then. Sorry, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. No, no, no it's really it. interesting. I, I, I could talk about esports all day. Like, I'm sure we'll come back to we, it. We we definitely a little will. bit. We later. definitely will. But first, tell me. 
Ed, what have you been playing this week? I'm going to ask you as well because I want to know yeah, what you've we'll been playing. Get you. um, this week, I have been playing um, Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. Yeah, you were telling me about this. Now, see, the controversial thing, you know, big, nice big AAA game. The controversial thing is this is the first Uncharted game I've played. See, you're broken. You're such a broken human being. So, wait, wait, no, are no, you no. not an expert? Should you not have played all of these? <laughs> no, you see, the thing is, I didn't have a PS... The first PlayStation I've ever owned is a PS4, which I got late last year. When, let's not talk about it too much, but when No Man's Sky came out, I bought a PS4. But let's, let's gloss over yeah. that. Let's, that game's going to be so good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I kind of, I, I've missed all the other, I could, I could, you know, I could still pick up Uncharted 4 and go back over it. Um, but yeah, so this, this is the first one. One of the reasons I decided to pick this up was, A, it was cheap, <laughs> which is always a bonus. Uh, and B, I heard it wasn't very long. Um, I also heard it was very good. Yes, that is the the third point. It is. I, I was incredibly impressed. The fact that they've kind of put out this, um, like, insanely polished, like triple A, like it's fun, fully triple A in every sense just, of the word. Just remind me, like, what's what's the gameplay like? Is it is it one of those? Um, it's Tomb Raider. Yeah, third it's kind person of Tomb Raider. Puzzle means... right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, now now I've got it in my head. The, yeah. The, so there's a bit of. I should know these, but I. <laughs> There's kind of, yeah, there's a lot of sort of running, exploring, puzzle solving, interspersed with like, you know, there's obviously an enemy military faction that's hunting you or hunting the relic that you're after. So occasionally you'll bump into them and have a gunfight. Um, for the majority of the game, the, the gunplay is very little, which is good. It's more about the exploration and stuff. And yeah, like, I, I was insanely impressed with it. Um, I mean, people have talked, like I said, that, you know, Naughty Dog are very famous for, like, their detail yeah, and their yeah. stuff. And that's the one thing that was very apparent. It was, like, all the little things I noticed that when I was playing it, which were, like, just kind of incidental little things, which made the game, like, immeasurably better. There's, I mean, one example I give is um, there's kind of, I guess, the sort of main crux of the game. You kind of, you kind of get to this area quite early on where you're... You get, it's like a little mini open world area where you have a jeep to drive around and you've got a bunch of temples you need to explore that you can do in any order. So they give you this jeep and you can kind of bomb around and just pick and choose where you go. And the jeep itself, you kind of, obviously, you walk up to it and you press triangle to get in. Now, where you're stood on the jeep detect, dictates the kind of entry animation. If you stand at the back of the jeep, you'll like jump into the back and like hop over the roll bar. If you stand at the like front, you'll jump on the bonnet and jump over the windscreen. It's like things like that. And then I also discovered if you jump off a building, you don't even have to press a button. If you just land on the jeep, she just gets in and you start driving. That's really cool. And there's, yeah, Th those little really details nice little the touches. And the com like the characters really cool. Like the dialogue was like amazing all the way through. And like there's the things that you know you'd be driving between points, and the characters would start up a dialogue about like the backstory or events that have happened. And then like you'd spot like a treasure that you need to get, so you get out, and it breaks that dialogue. So the you know your main character will say, oh, you know, just one sec, I'm just going to go check this thing out. You get back in the Jeep, and she's like, oh yeah, where were we? And they carry on the dialogue. <laughs> That's really cool. Which is cool. like, the, the amount of games that would just like, you know, it would just get cut off, and then you'd never And you would miss yeah, that. Yeah, no, you think the dialogue's sort of an yeah. afterthought they just put yeah. in to fill space, but, you know, the, if they've actually integrated into the gameplay... It's, it was, the, yeah... I, I was impressed like from start to finish it was I, I can't recommend it enough and like it, it kind of makes me hopeful for these smaller scale games because you think about AAA games now and you think like 100 plus hour gigantic open world map covered in like a billion things to do that you're never going to finish so to have this kind of quality in like a small condensed, condensed package yeah. that you can play through I think I finished it like I started it Friday night finished it Monday, sun, Sunday night, Monday. So how, was, how many hours again? So it's probably played? about seven or eight hours. Hmm. Like, and it's, like, it's condensed story, like, of like, yeah, just really polished goodness. It's that becoming th that style of gameplay is becoming very fashionable now, though. So I think, like, I think, I think it's sorry, cut you off. But I think it's unusual to see that from such a big studio. I mean, oh. I know it was originally. So this was originally intended as DLC for Uncharted Four, and at some point they realised it was kind of bigger than that and spun it off into a standalone thing but I, I would kind of hope to see more sort of a, this kind of length quality products that, you know it's another avenue that the studios can look at that might be not as kind of development intensive because I, I assume they're using like the Uncharted 4 engine like I, there's probably assets that are being reused 
um, to an extent. I mean, I mean, the environments were amazing. Like visually, it's like a stunning yeah, they, game. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of it was reused from Uncharted, but then again, Uncharted was just a beautiful game from start yeah. to finish. Anyway, so didn't it win um, BAFTA last it year? Did, yeah, it did. Oh, it won, won, won game of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, uh, it was up for quite a few, but that was the only one. They, they were even nominated this year when we were there. <clears throat> For a bunch yeah, of we, were, we were all there. We bumped oh, yeah. it. We bumped it right. you. No, uh, I, I was so surprised. I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, because we, we shouldn't have been there. No, really, no. I recognise that DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we yeah we bumped into each other at the Baftas early this year. Where yeah, yeah. yeah. There you I'm go. funny enough, Firewatch, which we're, we're playing through on education, which you should check out on YouTube. Plug, so, so plug, 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 plug. Um, yeah, the the <laughs> woman who plays um, Delilah in that, she won for the voice acting. She did, yeah, for Firewatch. Yeah. Um, which is cool it's very cool um, but yeah so yeah I've been playing yeah so you've un- had a good Uncharted. week of games yeah good good week of Uncharted I've been getting getting more and more back into Warframe but we covered that at length yeah we, I think we've, so, we've, yeah. we've Warframed this stream out I think for, for now for now yeah um, let's wait until that next patch drops yeah. and then we will I finally remembered how to play it <laughs> <laughs> which is taking me a good couple of weeks but yeah mm, well played you can, you can do the, the dash jump now Yes. How long? Did it, how long did it take it's you? Not to that. To get it's that. all the mods and all the subsystems, yeah. and they've added new subsystems and the map progressions. Like so, it was yeah. all, yeah, it was a bit overwhelming when I jumped back in after a year away and they changed everything. Um, but there's a lot of stuff they changed for the better. But yeah, let's not talk about. Well, well, yeah, let's hit on that when the patch drops because I want to. I'm going to yeah. play some more of that, and then when the patch drops, we're going to play it, and then we're going to tell these people about it <laughs> and they're going to listen because fuck you guys <laughs> uh, don't mean that so Joy, tell us what have you been playing if so, anything I, sorry I feel really guilty because as as a yeah. self-confessed video game expert you know what I call myself <laughs> I know very little about a lot of mainstream games and I'm <laughs> going to ask a lot of stupid questions no, so, no. I don't know no I genuinely don't play that like Uncharted I had to sort of stop and think well, what was Uncharted again <laughs> which seems like ridiculous for someone who works in the games industry right but uh, my, my I guess, I guess you, to be fair, like you come, uh, you, it's fair to say you're firmly planted on the esports yeah. side of things. So the whole single player thing is probably Platform. kind of a side side yes. avenue to the kind of esports. Exactly, scene. and and you know when when I go and tell someone I work in the games industry, they'll yeah. start telling me about Uncharted and I'm just like Mario look on my more, face, or, yeah. or the other titles you said, which I got. I'll be honest, I don't I don't know. You guys can educate me about. Well, what's... no, actually, I mean War. I mean mentioning War, Warframe is a weird one because it's, it's been around odd, yeah. for a long time, but. It's kind of it's been gaining traction very very slowly. Like when when it launched, as far as I'm aware, when it launched, it was a bit of a mess. And it's it's a free to play mm. like high concept sci fi, essentially MMO, but not quite yeah. MMO. Um, it's like an instanced MMO currently. And it's been gaining it's been gaining sort of traction over a period of time. It's got a very solid community behind it, and it's mm. kind of yeah. It's if if you want to like really engross yourself in something, it's it's something that can kind of fill that kind of okay. full on but in the, in the way that something like Eve or I think like, that's exactly what it did for us didn't it because we stopped playing Division yeah we and waiting. picked up and picked up Warframe oh no we were waiting for Division that was what we stopped was. playing Destiny and picked yeah. up Warframe yeah yeah. well but yeah like I say my yeah. focus is probably the kind of stuff you see streamed on Twitch <laughs> uh, yeah. the kind of stuff you'll see on stage at an esports event yeah. obviously you know which you've just come back from which you mentioned well, it it was well Gamescom. It's not well, an esports, well, event, but there was a, lots of esports there. Yeah. yeah, I was at Gamescom last week, yeah. and I have been playing games actually. Funny yeah. enough, <laughs> this is it. I mean, I do play games in general, but recently I have been playing a few. We can come back to Gamescom, but um, yeah. so I want to mention this because I'm quite proud of myself. <laughs> so, so a couple of things. Uh, I was I was looking for couch co-op because okay. like, PlayStation in my lounge, and I wanted to play two player, and you know, I, I don't. I can rant about this all day. There's so few good games that are that's, couch yeah. co-op these days. Yeah, I, 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 I think I would agree. Yeah. It blows Overcooked. my mind. Yeah, Overcooked, obviously. Yeah, Got we, it. We, we, played some <laughs> we played so much. That, that, that game was great. Um, what else? I, I Before I was playing Diablo 3 and I was playing Divinity, which are also <clears throat> both oh, yeah. obviously amazing games. But uh, recently... They're, when, they're not really the sort of party games you chuck on with a bunch of people around no no it's, it's just, it, just like, two of you awesome on a game. couch want to like yeah. chill out um spend a few hours playing something yeah amazing but recently borderlands 2 i know it's old okay yeah, no, no. uh the handsome collection mm-hmm. you know and nice. it's good it's yeah. a good co-op game it's a little old yeah. the story is if you read it it's good but if you skip it which you tend to do with two people sometimes 
But oh, you know what drives me crazy? Because this is PlayStation, right? Yeah. Playing an FPS on PlayStation. <laughs> It does my head in. <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess coming from a <laughs> hardcore PC pro gamer. Well, that's see, it. yes. See, I'm an FPS pro gamer, yeah. right? I, I pride I pride myself on my hand-eye coordination, you know, <laughs> being able to spin on a dime and, like, hit a rail across a map, you know? <laughs> and now I'm playing on a controller <laughs> trying to aim at these AI monsters. And it's it's a nightmare. It's, like, I, I it's, it's painful. But, I mean, I'm enjoying the experience. This is probably... One of the better co-op games I've played. Yeah, no, I, oh, yeah, I've, yeah. Heard, I've heard that about. I've not haven't played Borderlands. I did play Borderlands Three, but I never, <clears> never <throat> played it co-op. But I know I've certainly seen people stream it and, yeah. and play in like, I play, Yeah, I, I played Borderlands Two with as um, mm. one, one of my close friends, and we sank a few hours into that game. But it, but it was only in one day. We we played it for about mm. eight hours solid. It's a bit and frustrating was... actually afterwards. I got to say, I'm I'm frustrated maybe <clears> because of the mechanics of using a controller rather than a mouse and keyboard but it's just running out of ammo all the time maybe because i'm missing <laughs> maybe that's what it is <laughs> yeah you would be surprised the amount of gamers these days that play on pc with a yeah. pad yeah that's true actually and i know a lot of people that that because like the the biggest the first question they asked when destiny 2 was announced was like oh sweet it's gonna be on pc can is it gonna be pad compatible like yeah. can i plug my xbox pad in and play it like I'm losing faith in the world. I know. Right? I was, oh, it's just horrible. It hurts. It hurts me when to you... even think about it. But but fine. Okay, people will, will do <laughs> yeah. things like that. Don't worry. Does Counter don't... Strike still exists? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. There's, there's a whole. But, no, but Destiny Two will be keyboard and mouse as well. Oh, yeah, hundred yeah. 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 percent. Yeah. Yeah. I... Uh, this is exactly the reason I'm mm -hmm. going to play Destiny Two yeah. on my PC with my keyboard and mouse. <laughs> it's going to be so good. Yeah. I'm going to be in, so much better un than uncapped when I was on FPS. Uncapped FPS. Oh. I was watching. I'm not going. Wait, I'll talk about this later. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. D, I have so D, yeah, D2 this. beaters are on. It's on the list. It's on, <laughs> the, talk, it's on the talking points. We'll get to it. Um, I've also, you'll like this. Been playing some WoW at work with my colleagues. No way. Yeah, <laughs> go, going old school now. Nice. We, well, we're on the free trial account, so <laughs> <laughs> we've not got very far. We've done a dungeon. I was the tank. I forgot to bring a shield though. What I class did you realize, play? Uh, is it? Is it night elf? Warrior. 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 That's yeah. sorry. I have no idea what I'm doing. We're just basically getting led around by the one guy who plays the game. Um, <laughs> and you great. know what? I I never thought I'd like well, but it, it's something you do with your mates. Sorry, so this is the sort of yeah. theme yeah. with me. It's like always with friends. Yeah. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Touching on from that, I've this week have been playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> what? But, what? But let me pause you. What's drawn you back into WoW? I'm not back into WoW. This is the thing. So, so here's the story. So Chip and I were playing RuneScape. Um, so he came over last week and we got into RuneScape. We played a lot of RuneScape. We played a lot of RuneScape last week because we had, we had like five days off. So my friend came over and plays RuneScape with me, sat down and we were just like, bang. He literally sat here where Ed is and we, we were playing RuneScape for like three days solid. It was fantastic. And he went home and we were like, well, what can we play? Because RuneScape isn't really a co-op game. Like it's not a game that we can just group up and go do stuff together because we both play uh, an account called an Iron Man account which means that you're not allowed to trade or um, use the, or the auction house so you can't you, you're very segregated mm. from the rest of the community um, so we were like I sent him a, a screenshot I started to install the World of Warcraft client and he was just like no no don't go back <laughs> no you're doing so well don't do it so I was like Okay, pause, pause. I deleted my WoW folder. And he was just like, he was like, what can we play? Like, but yeah, okay, it's fine. So we, we talked about Albion Online, Aeon, um, Black <clears throat> Desert, yeah. like, and we were like, no, no, no. So we've done it all before. And he was like, well, why don't we play one of the WoW private servers? Okay. So we've what, started up explain on... Explain to me what... So, what, so what, a private what? server is, it's <clears throat> basically a legacy server. Where that only runs previous versions of the game. Okay. So this, the game we're playing. Did you run vanilla? The, no, we didn't. We're no. with Burning Crusade because Burning Crusade okay. was the best expansion. So the first expansion to World of Warcraft was the Burning Crusade. Now this server that we're playing on only runs Burning Crusade, so you can't advance past level seventy. And like, all of the stuff you know, in that tier is still is is like its current tier, and it's amazing. It sounds quite illegal though. Um, it kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so it, I'm it pretty kind sure of Blizzard is. have shut down some private servers. <laughs> Blizzard, Blizzard have shut down quite a few private okay. servers. Yeah, it's but, it's but, I, but I tell you, well, Blizzard, they'll find you now. Blizzard are missing a trick here because there are like forty thousand people on the server. Forty thousand. Yeah, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Yeah, and and this this company, so it's Warmain.com. Um, they run 
a Burning Crusade server, a um, Wrath of the Lich King server, and a Mr. Pandaria server, and each one has about 40,000 people. It's absolutely bizarre. But um, do you have to pay a subscription to play on it? It's, no. It's because it's not on the... the because it's the, not an official... On the network, not, yeah. It's not an official... Literally, and it is dodgy as fuck as well. So <laughs> I, I downloaded... I literally downloaded a 9 gig torrent, and I was like... Chip, I'm scared. That's a big fucking torrent. There could be anything in that. And he was just like, ah, oh, it'll be fine. So I downloaded it and I, I read the the readme on the on the torrent and it was just like, yeah, just click this and this and this and you're and you're live. And there and lo and behold, we now play level twenty. <laughs> I play a Tauron Druid and he plays a Tauron Shaman. Nice. Yeah, and it, but, I tell, but I tell you, it's so refreshing because we're playing a version of the game that has been extinct forever. And you're going back mm. to these, like the old talent system. Yeah. It's the old spell oh, yeah. system. The like the classes are different. But the old it's map so as well. Different. Obviously, yeah, the old map. and cataclysm yeah. they like change the map massively. Yeah. It's refreshing. It genuinely is. Like the 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 fifteen year old of me is like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> yeah. So we, so that's what we've been playing. That's, that's my uh, that's my play of the week. Wow. L- literally, literally wow. Literally yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not all, actually. I've been playing Quake Champions, of course. Of course you of have. Of course. That, that's on my notes. This is on the notes. So the oh, should we get to that? I mean, we got <laughs> well, to no, about, yeah, we can, we can say straight Well, I mean, that. QuakeCon was last weekend. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, got, a one got, million dollar tournament. Don't, don't, that got missed. I don't know what QuakeCon is. Do you know what? <laughs> well, I don't know what you were talking <laughs> about the half name. the time. I mean, come on. QuakeCon has been around for, yeah, been for 20 years, probably. I think 97 may have been the first one. Really? Holy shit, that's I great. Wouldn't have, I wouldn't have actually expected to. That must have been one of the first. Was this the 20th year? Of, it, it's something really? around that. Yeah, yeah. I uh, feel like even last year might have been the 20th anniversary. Isn't this I'm sure they did something last year. No, but... Quake Q3 Q test came out in '96, so how could they have done a QuakeCon? They, well, they might have. '96. Well, last it, year would have been 20 years. Well, just just the history of QuakeCon was it was started as a community event. <clears throat> it was just fans of the game that got together, and we used to do that kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> um, but well, it's like become. Land actually, you say that, but like Guardian Con for Destiny, which yeah. is a completely unofficial event, they did their second event this okay. year. Okay. They did, yeah, they did. A, Similar, yeah, similar thing. It's a, right. they kind of it's a bunch of Twitch Destiny streamers who get to who kind of banded together to put on. See, that's so thing. cool because it's it's not about yeah. making money or trying to market something. It's just a bunch of yeah. people who like the same thing and want to get together with their mates and talk about mm-hmm. it. And it's, it's 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 beautiful. Anyway, but QuakeCon obviously has become more yeah. professional, and it, it when it's come under the umbrella of. In software, I imagine. I actually don't Bethesda. know the full details. And it's Bethesda. 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 Whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, and yeah, and what it's become like a huge event, a uh, festival of Quake, which <laughs> I approve of, obviously. <laughs> Quake is my, so one, jam, my home. Sure thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they had a, a huge tournament for Quake Champions. The game's still in... Is it beta? Yeah, it's is it beta? Op- open beta, maybe. I, I looked, no, I looked this up because I knew it was going to come up. It's currently in early access, so you can buy in to the Founders Pack. It's intended to go free to play in the future, but at the moment, the only way you can get in is through having a previous beta code or buying into the early access Founders Pack. Okay. So you can go and play it now if you want to buy the Founders Pack. Um, I seem to recall, I actually have a beta key that I redeemed so I have a beta account which I haven't used because I don't have a PC um, <laughs> so um, yeah we could actually we could, yeah we could I, fire up my account I, on I have machine. a PC <laughs> yeah, we could log into my Bethesda account on your machine and you could have, we could have a play but um, I'm I'm loving Quake Champions though yeah okay I mean I think the game's got some there's things to talk about the game in terms of, of how it's balanced and, and so on but what, what they've done is they've taken elements of all the Quakes and Essences. you know, Quake is a historic game. Yeah, like, no, I absolutely. think people who play games now probably won't have heard of it, won't understand the legacy yeah. it brought. You know, bringing online play to a usable format that was Quake. You know, uh, all yeah. of esports it was kicked off by Quake. Uh, yeah. it, it's not big now, <laughs> right? And there's good reasons for that. It's a very old game, though. Yeah. It's not just because it's old. It's just that some games just suit the. The, the sort of setup the we have. Yeah. Well, no, it's just hard to get into because it's such an elitist game. It, <laughs> it's like you just get destroyed by a better player and that's just how it yeah. is. But what they've done is they've taken all the old Quakes and brought elements of that to Quake Champion. It's like, how yeah. would you do that? 
well, they've got different characters who all have different passive skills, active skills, okay, different yeah. movement types. Some of them behave a bit like a Quake 1 character in that you can turn in the air and keep your speed going. Some of them you have to strafe jump, so it's a bit like Quake 2, Quake 3. One of them that lets you crouch slide, which is a way of turning corners really quickly, which... <laughs> All of these are sort of accidental features of the old Quakes, but, actually. But, but yeah. make them iconic. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, and they're almost points of the game that yeah. you play the game for. Yeah, but they're all in the same game now. And yeah. That's the beautiful yeah. thing. And it, so and it does it's, sound pretty it's, it's, it's almost like a, a mashup arena sort of thing, like, where you can play different characters from different games in one arena. Like, yeah. that, that sounds really cool to me. Well, I can imagine it was a nightmare sort of to balance and they're still balancing yeah. you know all of mm. this thing all of this out in the game because it's a competitive game at its heart it's about you versus another player mm. or your team versus another team and and that's that is the heart of it so it doesn't work unless it's balanced and that's something you know that's gonna there's, that's there's gonna a lot take, of talking yeah, forums like about how so this doesn't work or that doesn't work but they've done a great job it, it's it's a great game it is a great game I love playing it um, so what was your what, um as you've been playing it, who's been your favourite favourite character? To play I I'm, I don't know. I always go back to like Ranger. It's a it, it's a bit of a Quake Three character, and that's okay. kind of when I was doing the most in Quake. Like actually, so it's got that feel. Uh, yeah, and it's the rocket jumping character because you take See, reduced rocket damage. I, I have to ask you about this now because I know I've spoken to you about this before. <laughs> you probably know what's coming. Oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna probably gonna debate it. But it is very heavily rumoured that you were the kind of originator of the rocket jump. No, it's not true at all. See, and no, everyone says this to me because I think someone put it on, on a Wiki, my Wikipedia page. Yes, it is on your Wikipedia <laughs> but page. But it doesn't say that. It's subtle, right? See, I mean, everyone knows what a rocket jump is, right? You, yeah. you fire a rocket at your feet and you jump at the same time and the explosion of the rocket launches you. It means you can, you know bypass areas in the map, jump <clears throat> higher, and then you all jump, go horizontally really fast and so on. What I invented was this very specific type of rocket jump, <laughs> which was really significant at the time, but makes no sense now because it was right. a map that was heavily played at the time in Quake 1. You used to, it's called DM4, you used to fall into the lava. And if you fell into the lava, you just sort of sit there and burn until you die. And it's like, Quake's a game of control, right? So you're in control. You drop into the lava. It's like, oh my god! It's like you've thrown the game away, and it was like the worst thing ever. And it's like having played, you know, countless hours of it. It's just, it's, it's like I can't believe this whole game turned on me just slipping a little bit, falling into the lava. <laughs> I discovered a way of getting out, which no one else had, and. I, it sounds so ridiculous, but it was a big deal at the time. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't sound ridiculous. Like, well, know, it kind like, of is. I, it's I, a imagine, map. No, I imagine when people saw you doing it, they, like, their minds were blown. And like, yeah. Well, but it was a map that was played heavily at the time. It was significant at the time. I, I did a bunch of stuff. I love, I love that freedom that Quake gives you because it's not about um, completing a mission, a story, an adventure. Mm. It is about how you play with the map and how... Yeah, there was a lot, the, there was a lot of spatial awareness... Um, the mobility yeah. was very much a key but, part but it's the meta game the, the story that evolves in this kind of esports game is not the story that the developers put in it's the story of how people play and it's like I you know I want to win a duel so I play a certain way but the gut the other my opponent has found a way to counter that now and then you have to find a way to counter that and that yeah. that's a developing story of people uh, you know <clears throat> taking power position in a certain part of the map uh, making sure you never get this weapon or this item. That's a, yeah, that's a very interesting thing, isn't it? Because Quake was the first real game that brought 1v1 play, like mm. com yeah. com super competitive 1v1 play, wasn't it? Yeah, we kind of touched on this last week because we were saying that that, that 1v1 it's, it's style almost what is lacking. The, the games moment. these days are, are missing. The games like Overwatch. And, and the, the thing, because Gearbox, I don't know if you saw Gearbox announced... The next thing they're working no. on is a one v. It's called Project One v One. Yeah. Okay. So that, yeah, that well, one. Well, but like I say, there was a reason why Quake hasn't sort of isn't the the most watched game on Twitch, and why it's not the most played. Yeah, I game. mean, I think you know part of it. Is, I think the brand went away for a long time. I don't um, think it's just that though. I don't think it's just about branding. I think like when I was playing Counter Strike, took off and overtook Quake. 
And the reason it did was because it's more rewarding as a new player to play Counter-Strike. And maybe you're spraying with a rifle and you get a headshot and you get that like <laughs> cha-ching $300. And it's like, you know, you need a little win every so yeah. often. In Quake, you don't get a win. <laughs> yeah, there's no... Because if you're not as good, you lose. You just lose, yeah. And and it's so, it's like, it just makes you not want to play. And, you know... That's... But do, do you not think that the reward comes from, like the practice and getting better at it and then starting to get those kills yes. and the feeling of accomplishment. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But you tell new players that when they just sort of switch yeah. off. Instant gratification. Uh, it's, but, I mean, I, I always see Quake as the pure, you know, head-to-head -head game, that dual game. And maybe that's what Gearbox are going for, right? It, it uh, kind of sounds because like it. Because it, it is, and it's always represented to me this pure sort of skill um, game and it's, you know, distill esports enough eventually you get quake again it's so it's um actually i just wrote i don't actually know is quake is quake champions team based yeah so they have two modes okay. i mean the dual mode is interesting because you have to switch characters um and team base they've got they've got team deathmatch but there's also sacrifice which is sort of their hybrid there's a bit of capture the flag there's a bit of escort there's a bit of um, okay. team deathmatch it's got elements of all of them Interesting. Yeah, yeah, and and like I say, QuakeCon was last weekend, um, and it was interesting to watch. Uh, the 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 dual winner was uh, Claus, who is a nineteen year old, and I, I was really disappointed because all my old friends were playing basically, right? <laughs> so Cooler's come you back. Didn't even this... get an invite. No, no, I. You have to qualify. It was a serious <laughs> oh, okay. tournament. Oh, okay. It was a serious tournament. Yeah, there was huge qualifications for the last uh, two months or so, I believe, and. Um, yeah, I wanted one of my old friends to win, or just the character from the history. But Claus is like a 19-year-old, insane aim, and he just destroyed everyone with that. So the final was him versus Vu, who no one will have heard of. But, you know, he's a huge name. He's like just incredible uh, player. He played CPM and he played Painkiller. He was like okay. incredible. And all of my old buddies, you know, they, they <laughs> fell to this 19-year-old kid who doesn't, no, he never was in that world. It's so disappointing. Yeah, at the same time. This new generation, they're too good. <laughs> no, but you see, that's a good thing. Because like, you're saying oh, yeah. like, nobody, nobody plays these old games. So to see, the new, yeah. see these new bloods. No, but it's also disappointing that that, it, that history, that strategy that they built up years wasn't really... And that's, that's maybe a failing of the game. Like, it's not as prevalent in this game. In that aim is too important. This guy, you'd think it was a bot, honestly. You'd I think I, I think that's like the biggest thing with the newest generation. Like, now I, I played League of Legends for the first time in years, a couple of months back. I played two games and I was just like, I can't play this game anymore. Like, I I've, I officially am no good at this game now <laughs> because people were just destroying me, and I'm like, I I know the people are killing me are like 15, 16 year olds. Like, <laughs> I, I I think that we are breeding newer generations of demon gamers <laughs> like I'm, I, I'm not even joking like you, you see these pro players there's nerd babies being born nerd babies being born everywhere and they're just insanely good like we need to build games that actually challenge them <laughs> oh I, I don't think that's completely I, I, I mean no I wouldn't want to be a pro gamer now I'm with you there yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to be up against it's terrifying that but but it's also a case of like how much time are you going to put into video games that, that's like, the other honestly. flip side isn't it and, like, and not just video games not the fun stuff I mean sitting there and like just training doing training like yeah I mean, and, I mean if, like, you, if you look at these pro teams like TSM and Cloud9 like they go boot camp for three yeah. four months at a time where and they will play my, for 20 yeah, hours a day mind numbingly yeah. <laughs> sort of dull yeah. sometimes but you have to do it because you want to get better yeah. they're not playing because they love the game all the time they're playing because they want to win mm. a prize because or... this is their profession yeah. like this is yeah. this is this, this is their money yeah I, I i don't think i'd want to be a pro gamer now i mean you i'd like go back? i'd like the money no way, the I, money. I don't think i could i honestly i don't think i could compete against that like you say that level, the, this yeah. young generation yeah. who who understand like it's <laughs> there's a prize to be won if you're amazing at this I mean that that's sort of another amazing thing about esports now is the prizes to be won. We had uh, Ti yeah. Seven, was it twenty four million? Was it more than that at the end? Yeah, so yeah, twenty four million dollars. Yeah, first place was ten point eight. That was for Dota, Dota, 2. Dota, Dota two. Yeah, yeah. But even like so, segueing onto another thing on my list. Um, so the PUBG had its first tournament at Gamescom last week. Mm. I did stick my head in yeah. to have a look, and even wow. their prize pool was. 
350k for yep. a, and this this is an early access game that sold eight million copies in four months yeah and has a 350 dollar 350 thousand dollar euro whatever it was yeah so you said early access game sort of thing it's only early access but yeah, yeah. it's it's a phenomenon and it, i think it, i mean a lot of people are saying like that you know they were seeing like this tournament was like could it be an esport like you know it was a bit of a sort of test the waters it's a new game it's not fully released what's your opinion on that <laughs> I mean, I've been looking at PUBG a lot, you know, in the, in the esports aspect, and it was, um, yeah, I mean, it was in the ESL hall. It was part of the. Yeah. It was a bit dis- sorry, just to go back to yeah. Gamescom. It was a bit disappointing because because of German laws, I suppose it had to be enclosed. I would have loved really? to see. Really? Yeah, so it was kind of in a. You, you know, you know. You know, remember at Gamer Base for eighteen rated games, we kind of had to put them behind the wall. So no, because the laws are not that you can't play it if you're under eighteen. You can't see the screen. So I, I imagine wow. that that's why it had to be all enclosed, which is a bit disappointing. Because I would have loved to sort of just sit in an audience, and and experience, you know, the game, have it commentated to me, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, it's it's a new it's a new kind of format. And the problem is, it's not team versus team there's a whole yeah. load of people yeah I was, so yeah i watched like a few of the tournaments so they did it they did it over four days um for anybody who's familiar with PUBG but didn't watch it so they did um the first day they did solos um, and the way that they do it is they run three games and everybody gets points per game depending on where they finish in the list and you get also get five points per kill and so, like, the first, whoever comes first in a match gets, like, 500 points. So you automatically get a huge advantage going forward. But then, obviously, you have to perform the next time. Otherwise, somebody else picks up 500 points. So it's kind of like, um, and there was, um, yeah, a guy called Evermore won the solos with some pretty interesting tactics. The first first mm-hmm. game, he went up to the um, the Spawn Island, hung out, <laughs> hung out up there for a bit uh, before coming back. And then, I think, actually, in the first game, he actually died he trying w- to went, get back into the circle he because, went he went back to the spawn yeah, up in the top corner wait is that possible yeah <laughs> i've never seen that <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah he so yeah first match he went up there and hung around for ages just looting and doing stuff um left it so long that he didn't leave himself enough time <laughs> to get back into the circle and just ended up dying on his way back Damn. i think he had a bit of a firefight on the way and which dropped him some health and then yeah just couldn't make it but then the second game he won <laughs> um, uh, and then placed kind of reasonably in the third game, which kind of gave him gave him the points to take it. Mm. But they had, they had like a, there was a bunch of TSM guys, some Cloud Nine guys, um, some Liquid Team Liquid guys. So there's a lot of a lot of sort of big well, everyone's big teams. playing it. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. You look at the Twitch figures. Wait, it's the top streamed game on Twitch yeah. currently, isn't it? And yeah, and like just just yesterday or day before, it was announced that it was it surpassed Dota on Steam for like most concurrent players. So like, oh, oh, it's amazing, and I. I sit there and watch some players and I think it's uh, I like that that single view and the nice thing about the game especially if you're a streamer is that there are downtimes which means you can talk to your Mm. audience if Mm. if a game is like full on all the time Mm. it's not a great streaming game because you need Mm. to to be yeah definitely interaction you need you need that interaction yeah exactly but um yeah I I mean I I think this tournament was uh I mean it's interesting because it's 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 sort of been forced into esports without knowing what a competition looks like. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's why it's I think, like... I think it was a good... It's definitely a good starting point. Like, I certainly enjoyed watching it. There was some really tense moments, especially when, obviously, towards the end of the matches, when the circle's getting smaller and everyone has to get to this place, and it's like... It could be... Like, it gets really so, intense. So what was the spectator <clears throat> you like? Was there, like, an over so they have So was... they, have, um, they have a spectator count, which was fairly slash unfairly derided over the weekend because uh, there was a bit I didn't see it but apparently they watched somebody swimming for like 20 minutes which wasn't great viewership um, but yeah so they, they actually showed on Twitter they did a little um, video of the control room where they could have did a bit of a 360 and they had these banks of monitors with all the players viewpoints which they could then switch so, between the cameras oh, wow. okay. and so the viewpoint that you're getting as a, a viewer um you can see the positions of all the players on the map. So they bring up the overhead map and it's got everybody plotted on it. And then for also from the player's viewpoints, you can see like the everybody's names kind of like in the distance and dotted around. So I actually thought that was really cool, being able to see where everybody was. And it kind of, 
it's kind of interesting to see people's tactics and how they play the game obviously not knowing where the other people are mm. so it's kind of funny watching people you're getting people who are like in buildings like opposite each other with absolutely no idea that there are people in the op opposite buildings and seeing how they like does one person then notice them or do they just drive off in completely opposite directions mm. it's kind of really fun to see that kind of aspect of it and so so that from that point like from a viewership point i thought it was great to watch because you've got all this stuff going on i really like watching but it. watching yeah it does certainly in the solos tournament obviously they're only looking at one person at once. So cutting to the action, I think, needs to be refined. There's, there's some work to be done there, and like jumping around between the cameras and getting to like where stuff is happening. They kind of they, they kind of fluffed that a bit in s some cases, but you know, it it's was, only going to get yeah, better. It, it was it was a first attempt. the The commentators did a great job. I mean, there was a few technical difficulties. It was like hour long delays to like matches starting and the commentators you know by day three they were, they were you could tell they were they were struggling a bit for things to talk about in some <laughs> cases um but they you know, they you know they 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 held their end up and they did a great job um yeah so yeah for a for a, a first stab at kind of being thrust into this kind of world of esports it's, it's a very promising beginning but it, it has an advantage right this is something i've been thinking about is that PUBG is is not like dota or league or legends yeah it's it's an fps for first of all someone who doesn't play the game you know what's going on yeah <laughs> you, you know you can to be educated yeah, you instantly get an idea it's like yeah. every like it's everybody fighting against themselves you need to find stuff to survive it's, it's yeah it's, it's battle royale right yeah everybody knows um, battle royale you is. don't need to know the mechanics of it this guy's got a big gun he's shooting at that guy it's like i i get what's going on right yeah. and you also get the mechanic right it's it's a fog circle like a hunger games it fog gets smaller and, smaller. and you're yeah. forced into yeah. an area it's like yeah i get it it all makes sense yeah the other beautiful thing is that um most of these games uh count strike league of legends and dota 2 those are the top Top three, yeah. Well, tier one esports, we call yeah, them. Yeah. Hearthstone as well, sort of. Yeah, it's on the questionable. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Let's not talk about Hearthstone. Okay. RG, but, Druidstone, but whatever the, you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, but days. the problem about the top three is that all of them ha do not have a fixed time limit. You do not know how long a game is going to run. Yeah. You actually, they could run yeah. forever. This is one, technically. Of the, one of the worst problems for League of Legends, wasn't it? Like you having like league, league matches against these two amazingly high skilled teams that were going for like 80 minutes. Like. <laughs> Like, that happened like, how, two how seasons you, ago. Yeah, how do you schedule? Yeah. Like, yeah. how do you schedule it? How do you, like, you, people have to leave bigger yeah. gaps. I imagine from your point of view, that is a huge thing. Yeah, and, and PUBG, though, has a mechanic which means that it's, yeah, it's, a fixed. it's pretty defined how yeah, to within, the shortest game and longest yeah. game. Unless everybody just can, <laughs> drops in one point <laughs> and just kills, it, kills each other immediately, the game will pretty much extend to the last, second to last or last circle, right? I mean, yeah. like, it's going to be close. And the game has to end because the circle closes and everybody is yeah. dying. And that's, an, that's a really interesting point, actually. That's mm. not something I thought about. But yeah, having that, having that timeless definitive trait, end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but esports is becoming a spectacle now. It's not yeah. just this thing that's underground. And this is an such an important point is being able to schedule it, being able to say when yeah. a game is on, when the next game is on, being able to plan your breaks. I mean, in that's between definitely and, definitely when I'm watching tournaments. One of my biggest bugbears is like. <clears throat> a match will finish and then they pop up the you know the the analyst will come up they'll speak for five minutes like right we'll be back with the next game in 25 minutes mm. and you're like might, great because they, they've had to allow that time in case stuff runs long or whatever yeah. and it's like cool i'll just go and do something else at 25 minutes and then come back and watch the next game but yeah if they can the yeah as you say, it's, if, it's if the schedule yeah. yeah if the scheduling is much tighter and stuff can run on yeah. I, I see that in hearthstone a lot and it's mostly, yeah. it's mostly because there's the capacity for someone to get 3 would and yeah. then for the game to go to five, uh, five matches. Yeah. And like those two, that's like an extra 20 minutes. Like, yeah. it's, it makes 20 it minutes half an hour, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. <clears throat> on, on the flip side, though, it has obviously a lot of random elements. You know, do, where where do you drop? Are people around you? Do you get the loot you want? But there's kind of, there's kind of weird tactics to that as well. Like, you know, people will have their sort of preferred drop locations where they know that kind of vaguely decent loot will be and yeah. it's like are other people like are a lot of people going to drop there so there's a lot there is kind of a tactic to it as well yeah, yeah okay the stuff you find is random but it's, that also makes it exciting well yes. i mean yeah like, like you could say the <clears> same <throat> thing about so many uh really great spectator experiences like yeah. formula one right 
Mm-hmm. Someone you could crash. You could have an yeah. engine failure. Everybody that's... watches Formula One for the crash at the first corner. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be honest. Well, okay, maybe Formula One's not the best example, but but it is. It's like the excitement is there because unknown things can happen. Yeah. It's like how do you react to that? And it it and you know it doesn't matter. In my view, it doesn't matter that there's random elements. You know, because it like you say, the good players overall will do better. Yeah, eventually. they kind of float to the top. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. As a starting point, they've made it. They've made a solid case for it. For I'm really motorsport. excited to see yeah. where it develops. Yeah, I'm really yeah. excited to see what they what they can do with this as well. I mean, considering, as you say, like it's an early access game. <clears throat> oh, and I yeah, I nuts. saw I saw Player Unknown. I was a bit like well, starstruck. Brendan, Brendan Green. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was I was in a meeting and like they were outside. Um, so with the developer group, uh, I guess they all flew over from Seoul. They're in Salt. They're in South. Korea yeah, he had to, he had to, I remember he had. To, yeah, because he got bought by Blue. What are they so called? Blue, Blue Hole is the Blue publisher. Hole. <clears throat> um, yeah, and he had to basically move to Seoul to work on the game. Yeah, but they needed a meeting room, and I was like, "Hey, come use mine." I thought I'd have a chat with him, but then they seemed too busy. I was like, "Okay, this is a bit too, uh, bit too." Yeah, yeah I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. It's funny. He yeah, he's become a bit of a. A bit of a figure himself. Well, yeah, no, no. I, I was like honestly quite starstruck with him because you know he's he's done something amazing. Yeah, yeah. honestly, four eight million copies in four months. It's it's insane. I don't really know what can compete with that. Like, yeah, it's, got, it's, it's got to be like one of the fastest. I would love. To, I would love. Yeah, I would love to see the statistics on that. Well, to see. but but you know what's going to happen now? There's going to be so many games like this coming out. Yeah, but it's they, gonna they, try they're going to. Nothing's really going to be able to dethrone it because it's the so, original. So, Ark, right, it's, well, it's not the Ark, original. Well, it's not the original. Oh, Ark, yeah, okay. Ark yeah, tried yeah. it. Like, Ark. So it's, it's the one that's captured people's attention and imagination, though. though. It's, it's that. Well, I, mean, I mean, Daisy and H1, Z1, they. Yeah, but they, it's, I mean, that's been around for a while. It hasn't, you know, it hasn't. This kind of growth hasn't happened for those titles and mm. for whatever reason. Whereas. This game has some. There's some obviously something about it which people have latched onto. Maybe it's the the kind of the streaming aspect where people have picked up on it on streams and then kind of come in. Um, that must that's the uh, the plane from We're under attack just flying over. I don't know if the mic's picking that up. But there's a, there's, <laughs> there's a, nothing in here. There's no loot in here. For <laughs> there's, a, there's a helicopter above us. Um, yeah. So there's obviously some there's some sort of spark in this game that people have latched onto. That's kind of made that's given it this rapid like just insanely rapid growth yeah. that these other titles haven't just haven't clicked in the same way well yeah they may have done it first or whatever but this is the one that's kind of yeah I don't, it's that, it's and, that. Ha- and it's another game that isn't about the storyline it's really yeah. about how people play it. Yeah, the, na- the, narrative, each other. the narrative is written yeah. as the but game but it's a rich narrative still yeah. that's the thing it is and, there's, a- and it's different every single game like the game plays out com- completely differently each time. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting. To I think grow. I think I'm going to play this. You so, so you've got a PC. Yeah, yeah. He's got so an long, excuse. You don't. Well, no, I, I don't. Well, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Few, you got an excuse. Well, no, not a few, play. few months. It's coming to Xbox, and I'll be. You know, we've been talking about it in the cl- like the Destiny Clan. Um, two, two, three guys. Oh, that's yeah, we'll a controller, be, isn't it? <laughs> it <God>. is controller. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to do it too. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, yeah we're we're, we're, we're already talking about doing some some squad games yeah. on on the Xbox. I mean, and... a bunch of my friends already play it, and they're always like, "We're gonna go play PUBG now," and I'm like, "Oh, okay, I'll play Overwatch on my own." <laughs> so I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to give it a shot. Give it, give it a shot. Yeah. Um, okay. This, uh, I certainly mentioned my my Destiny Two clan or Destiny clan there. Let's let's segue segue nicely. The Destiny De- Destiny Two. Beta, That's PC, PC, PC beta, beta yeah. is currently happening mm. as we speak. Um, everyone, have everyone's it? playing it. Who has it? I, I don't have it because I've not pre-purchased it. So there was I bought a, I bought open. a oh, but if you pre-purchase it, you you can. Have is there it. any pre purchase I thought it was just open open. I don't. Know. Oh no, it's not open open. Yeah, if you've if you've pre-purchased, you can. Uh, you can uh, play the beta, but yeah, I, so I didn't pre-purchase it because technically I got a copy of it with my 1080. And I'm still fighting with the people I bought it from to get the copy. Because <laughs> <laughs> basically what they did is they were like, let's, yeah, yeah, let's give away a copy of Destiny 2 with 1080s. And then all of their 1080s sold. And they were like, oh, we don't actually have these copies of the games. Um, let's call up Bungie and find out if we can, oh, we, oh, we can't get them? Oh, oh okay. Nice. Good, good job. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I have to pre-purchase it still. 
But yeah, literally everyone I know has been playing it. Yeah, and everyone has been really impressed with it. Like, um, yeah, PC community is taking taking. As is telling it. us that D two beta is open. My bad. Oh yeah, you're wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, when I went into the Blizzard launcher, it didn't say play the beta. It was said pre purchase. So maybe as is wrong. Who knows? <laughs> well, um, that means you can play it. <laughs> I can. I'm not good though. I mean, so yeah, the the. The big thing about the PC version is obviously the FPS is uncapped. It is. Is it uh, fully uncapped? Fully yes. uncapped, yeah. I've seen Twitch streamers playing it at 200, 200 FPS. 200 FPS yeah. and 200, being, uh, being very not happy. 240. <laughs> Sorry, this is my thing. It's, I, it's, okay. Well, when I, when I got Quake Champions, I was like, oh, I heard of 240 hertz monitors. I've got a 240 hertz monitor. It is beautiful. Nobody well, will believe me that it makes a difference, but it makes a difference. It, this man will... As I will believe you, he will agree with you fully. Well, well I used sorry, I always digress, <laughs> but I used to play. We used to play CRT monitors, right? Yeah. I, Where uh, you could yeah. play at 240 FPS, and there's a huge difference, especially mouse aiming. Mm, yeah. And like, oh, I'd, die, I'd love to play Destiny 2 at 240. 240. Uh, you can probably play it at 200 on my computer. Let's do it after this. If if you're if you're, if you're about <laughs> okay. it, we can record let's, it. That'd be really cool. <laughs> well let's try let's do it all right yeah let's let's see, stay tuned let's see if we can download it yeah <laughs> i can download it <clears throat> it's not it's not um, nothing for my for yeah so yeah there's lots lots of good stuff happening with the pc beta lots yeah, of people are yeah, very excited very excited but, but it's, it. so this is the first time you can play destiny with a keyboard and mouse though. yes yes it is, is indeed yeah yeah destiny will never destiny lots of people wanted wanted d1 to come yeah it never yeah, happened it never, it? never happened there are too many too many developer um uh yeah, I mean, for, for issues, yeah, yeah, whatever reason, D one never happened. I think it, it was just focused on consoles. So yeah, um, what well, yeah, it was rumored that D two was going to come. They announced it, um, although the launch is delayed by six weeks. The console version comes out next Wednesday. Hmm. PC version. Oh yeah, the PC of, version is twenty fourth of October. Yeah, twenty fourth yeah, of October. Um, I know that because I booked it off work last but, week. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they made a lot. Of the, you know they kind of they're doing all the right things. Like it's not. A console port they've had an external studio working on the pc version to like make sure it is properly up to scratch mm -hmm. and running every the, the comment the comments i've been hearing the past couple of days is all the streamers have been playing it buttery smooth is, is, is the word <laughs> yeah pr pretty um, much yeah. everyone's very happy with when they got in it, took, it, it looks... took a lot of streamers quite a while to get in because um there were problems with the american servers so everyone was playing in europe so, um, yeah, apparently, apparently that was a, a big problem for them, but they all got in eventually. I was watching King Gathalian play, mm. and he was just like, nah, as he was running around. He was like, "This is so good." <laughs> well, I don't know, but I, I always heard with Destiny One that you know it was it was an FPS on console, which I always hate. But <laughs> but I heard like the controls are actually pretty good. You know, yeah, it's a and great like yeah, that, everyone's always the, the, the thing. Me. See, the thing the thing that always had me in Destiny was. The, the core mechanic that they went for of the 30 seconds of fun gunplay loop was they absolutely nailed it. Mm. Like yeah, the, the, gun, the gunplay is so good and actually ruined a lot of other FPSs for me because having played so much Destiny, you like going to play something like Far Cry or Cold or something, it just feels really floaty and weird. The and only... it's like it just not a, they got this solidness to the gunplay which just feels so good the only game that nailed it for me similarly was Division D Division gunplay I loved See, I thought I it was so good it, yeah I, I do like it I wouldn't say it's comparable to Destiny I guess it's because it's third person I found it different it like it does work for me oh, yeah, but I suppose the third person does change it but then I really enjoyed the, 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 the third person shooter yeah I thought, no, I've got, I've got no a, problems with that. a great take like I'm a massive Gears of War fan right Huge Gears of War fan, so that third person for me was was really good. Let's. I want to play some Destiny now. <laughs> <laughs> well, me too. Uh, now. Are we doing? We've got. We've got a few more minutes. minutes. Yeah. Do you want to? Uh, there's so much stuff that we haven't talked about. Yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah. Just, uh, um, I just, I just want. Okay, let's just rattle through. There's been a bunch of stuff released um, in the like this week, last week, um, which we're not going to have time to properly talk about. Man, the Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battles, the weirdest game, probably one of the weirdest like. Um, mainstream games this year. Have you seen, have you watched this? When it, when it was announced, everyone was like, Whoa. and then people saw gameplay and were like, "All right." This. Yeah. So for, for those that don't know, so somehow Nintendo done a deal with Ubisoft to have the Rabbids <laughs> cosplaying as Mario characters 
in an XCOM style game. <laughs> what? And yeah, if you've not <laughs> seen this, it's as weird as it sounds. <laughs> this is exactly the reaction. Yes. So they, yeah, they yeah. have they have Mario flanked by rabbits, one cosplaying as Princess Peach, which is apparently the best character in the game because it's just <laughs> mental. Um, yeah, and it's it's been getting really good reviews. And yeah, it's it's an XCOM game in the kind of Mario world with rabbits. And it's just nuts. And yeah, people, it's it's been doing really well. Yeah, it's doing really well. Uh, it came out. I think it was yes. I think it was yesterday. It came out. Mm. On, obviously on Switch, um, of course. Um, but yeah, they yeah when they unveiled it um, E3, everyone was just like, "What is going on?" Because um, they had um, Shigeru Yamoto come out on stage, yeah. having a bit of a face off with um, Eve Guillemot from Ubisoft. They <laughs> both had one of the weapons from the game, kind of did a bit people of a standoff like, on stage, and people like, going this, on? Is, "This is just crazy." Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's come out, and it's um. Is yeah, it going to be uh, one of the killer titles on Switch, you think? Uh, it's prob- probably yeah. not quite Zelda. No. <laughs> okay. but it's, it's definitely a, know, a solid title. There's potential it just sounds it. insane to me. Oh, I'll have to see it. I'll have to see it to believe it. I still don't believe you guys, actually. <laughs> we'll show you, we'll we'll show show you a video. You. We'll right? show you it's, it's a real thing, I promise. Okay. I haven't just made this up to you. <laughs> um, and funny, yeah, talking about Mario, so his, his old nemesis, Sonic, had a new game, which came out last week, Sonic Mania. But his which old is, nemesis. Well, yeah, because back in the day, it was Sonic and Mario, the competing systems. It was, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you oh, that. The, okay. the, the, I'm like, sorry, we, there we've gone out of his uh, comfort <laughs> oh, zone. Yeah. Say, there's never been a story arc where Mario and Nemesis... <laughs> and Mario and no. What? <laughs> no, no, yeah, that, those two at the Olympics, that's like <laughs> way, way after. Um, well, this is when Sega... Mega Drive was a thing. Yeah, so, well. yeah, so I had a Sega Mega Drive. Yeah, Sega, Sega you know. did hardware. You may not. Have, you may not have made. No, this. I knew that. I had a Mega Drive and a um, Master System. So screw you. Yeah. So yeah, they, they've um, <laughs> they released Sonic Mania, and that's also been. It's it's basically the Sonic game that fans have been wanting for a very long time. Mm. They basically remastered. I think it's like Sonic One through Three. Three. Yeah. They kind of it's a remaster but also a reinterpretation so some of the levels they've modified and changed stuff around and kind of added bits to um but yeah it's, it's a classic sonic game in every Pretty sense of the world sure there are a few fan-made levels that were yeah, re- so referenced I, in the game yeah i think that, so the, the guys who've made it are like obviously massive sonic nerds which is why they've kind of it's been a real passion project for them um yeah, and it's really paid off. Like everyone's been raving about it, saying yes, this this is the Sonic game we've been wanting. But but the people raving are probably reviewers and so on. I mean, I mean, is it gonna be as successful <clears throat> as modern day modern times? Oh, I mean, because because the gameplay it, is retro. I yeah, imagine. yeah, no, it's two D. Yeah, with um three D bonus stages. Um and yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not gonna do AAA numbers, obviously. Mm. Um, but it's for, for, be, for the yeah. people, yeah, I guess for the people who want that nostalgia hit of the That's exactly the, it, the, it? the old Sonic games, but you know they're not as easy to play, or like, you mm. know we need emulators or whatever. This is a proper like release okay. of, of of substance. It's a bit of fan service, is it? Yeah, yeah, essentially. Huge, but huge after I think, service, I think after a lot of let's be fair, a lot of very failed mm. Sonic game attempts, um, it's kind of nice that they've actually got something decent and new to play. Mm. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Right. So well, let's let's wrap there because we we're, we're running over. We uh, almost we're almost running over. Um, oh, back to the week time. Shit. I don't know why That's you good. hate <laughs> facts. Of, fact of the week. Fact of the week. So time. Ed Ed introduced thing. this fact of the week. But I'm not aware of this. So no, it's you re- so, ready, I'm ready to be so thrilled. Good. Okay, be ready. <clears throat> this is a good one. Right. I, I always find good facts. Right, hit me. So fact fact of the week this week is the fact that. Um, the PlayStation 1, the original PlayStation, was almost originally the Nintendo PlayStation. So um, back in, hang on, I've got dates on the screen, um, 1991, um, Nintendo were talking to Sony about doing a thing called SNES CD, which was going to be an add-on for SNES. So, so we're talking about a time before Sony were in the games yes, market, yeah, really, we'll, at all. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, this is Sorry. how this is how good this fact. Is. Get the fuck with the fact of the week, Sujoy. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one um, rule. Yeah, so Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo were talking to Sony about doing um, a SNES CD, and this it was um, a Super Disc was going to be the the format. Um, Nintendo started to get sort of cold feet because they were 
it was because it was a proprietary format they were worried that sony was going to have too much control over the disc format sony went ahead and announced it they're like oh yeah we're doing this thing with nintendo the next day nintendo announced that they were partnering with philips instead basically stabbing <laughs> sony in the back and completely screwing them so sony turned around and went you know what we're going to do it ourselves and that okay. became the, the PlayStation. PlayStation. So yeah, that, that, I think oh, that's a pretty cool dif- story. How different the world could have been, right? Yeah. So yes, yeah, Sony, <laughs> if Sony had got into bed with Nintendo, we would never have had PlayStation, and we would have never had the competition. We would yeah. between we Sony would and Nintendo. Never have then. had Pokemon. Like we would, like it would. Why, all we, of these things would have been Nintendo, completely different. Why would it you just, have Pokemon? It's, it would have just been on a CD format. That yeah, would have been on a play. On a, no. But but without the competition, <clears throat> between there would have been no Game Boys. Why? They would never have done it. That's Why would they have done it? Because the handheld. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> PlayStation did. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it was yeah, it's, it's Nintendo I PlayStation. I really like that. that. Was it a good fact of the week? Is that, yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's a, that was a good fact? <laughs> See, Perry, don't you're wrong. Don't encourage him. Don't encourage him. I have to what? live with this. You don't. <laughs> Well, can he man- maintain the quality? Is no, the see, this is the question. Next month. Well, we're four episodes yeah, in. Month, I'm doing yeah. right so far. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. Next week, you need to. I'm going to run out at some point. Yeah. But yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you for your fact of the week. You're welcome. And thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Sue Joy. Thank being, you, Sue Joy. Oh, no, for thanks, joining thanks for us. Very first, inviting me here. Very first question. Anything guest. you want to plug to our four <laughs> viewers? <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm just no, here for fun. Just, Excellent. Just, no, no, the, 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 the experience yeah. is enough. Like, yeah. I did some well, once again, thank great. you so much for coming down. It's been uh, yeah. it's been a pleasure having you. Maybe we'll see you again. Yeah, Who maybe knows? we will see you again. Yeah, definitely. I live around the corner. You do. Yeah, 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 <laughs> lives around the corner. Made, made it very no, nice no, sorry. No, it doesn't. I've flown in miles for this. Yeah. <laughs> Straight from Gamescom. No sleep. <laughs> okay, I've been Perry. I've been Ed. And we've been guys playing games. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Catch the. Other stuff. Other stuff. <laughs> on the, I was going to plug the, <laughs> the uh, edu- education. education, but we didn't do one this weekend. So no. we'll, we'll do that this week. And we'll, Epis- we'll episode four of Firewatch is coming soon. It's coming. And yeah. it's getting exciting. It's getting fiery. Yeah. That's what I did there. Good. It's yeah. fire. That's, okay, that's, I'm going to end this now. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Catch you later. <laughs> Cheers.